We are the heart and soul of the community. Gospel, 1680 AM. Welcome to another edition of Real Family Talk. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of Real Family Talk. This is your host, Jay Real. I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday evening. It's kind of strange in the city, man. I was driving, as usual, as it happens in uh, Florida, driving down the road, clear as the day, no rain in sight, hit a corner. <laughs> pouring down, wasn't it? it was pouring I already down. know. Puddles everywhere. <laughs> That's how it be. That's how it be, man. You gotta love that, man. You gotta love the weather in uh, Florida. That's how it is. Let's go ahead and uh, welcome everybody in the building. How you doing, sir? Jeremy, how you doing? You doing I'm doing right? good. I'm doing good. How you doing? How you doing? Doing all right, sir. Doing all right. Mr. King's in the building. How you doing, Mr. King? My brother, my brother. It's raining. That's what it is. <laughs> it's crazy, man, because I was in the car with you, turned that corner, and all of a sudden, it showed me Florida. I, we was at a light. I saw rain across the street. Only in Florida, brother. Only in Where were y'all Florida. at? Y'all come down with Silverstar? Coming no. down Clara Corner or Coy? Oh, okay. Corner Coy. We was coming off of Hawassi. So beautiful. Made a right on Clara Corner or Coy. Got a little muggy. Went down maybe one light, maybe two. Next thing you know, I'm like, did it rain over here? <laughs> Where did this come from? Did it? Next thing you know, we get the OBT, it's puddles of rain. Like, it just been raining all day over there. Yeah. From Hawassi to OBT, complete difference in the weather. That's, that's Florida for you, though. Yeah. <laughs> That that's it how, is. That's how it works here, man. Good times, good times. Ah, right, let's see, man. We got we got a lot of stories to get to. A lot of stories to get to here. Uh, let's jump right in. Uh, tonight we're going to discuss a few things. We're going to talk about uh, Hillary Clinton. She is uh, obviously made her announcement, her official announcement this past uh, weekend in a video. Uh, Marco Rubio made his official announcement on Monday. Uh, there's the Atlanta cheating scandal. That's uh that they just made the sentencing uh, phase of the for the teachers involved in that particular case, um, and we have another shooting, another shooting as well of an on un- an unarmed black man. This time, somehow, the officer or really part-time officer, because from when I read the story, he, he actually isn't an official police officer. You can't count him a part-time. Then. <laughs> he, he sort of helps part, out. Part, part-time and you getting a part-time check. He, he helps you out, I guess. Check. He helps out, but apparently he got his taser and the gun that they issued him confused. And when he intended to tase, he actually ended up shooting the man. That's now, crazy. That is crazy. That's wrong on so many. Levels. That's that's crazy. You know, and, and it reminds me, you know, it's the same thing that ha- happened to uh, Oscar Wilder in Oakland at the Fruitvale Station. You know, what that, that whole um, process was about. It was the same situation. Now, that situation, I believe the guy was kind of, you can consider him a rookie cop. Now, this guy, w- one, he was a volunteer. Two, 73. Now, I'm not no ageism, age discrimination type of person, but if, if you're 73 and you're not on the force, you probably shouldn't be policing. <laughs> you, you think if uh, you was a retired policeman, that's one thing. But you never made well. No, I think they, I think he did say he served. He's a reserve deputy. That's what they call it. No, I mean I believe they think he served on the police force like in the '60s or something, that, and like for a year or something like that. Yeah, I believe I read a story that said some. I read one part, one article that said that. But even still, that was 50, 60 years ago. But if you are not a professional. Law enforcement officer at seventy three, you should not be volunteering for anything. Well, you can be a mall cop. I, yeah, yeah, I guess you, you can, can be do a that. mall cop. You can walk well, around the mall. You shouldn't have no weapon on you. No, taste. Especially not no. at seventy three. I'm sorry. Peppers. But no. Too much. It's too too many possibilities of things going wrong at seventy three. You, you should have a radio. Yes. <laughs> and, a, and a flashlight. No, no flashlights. No, that's right, because you got cataract. There you go, because you can't see. Yeah. So <laughs> no flashlight. No. A radio. And the one, the one radio, just a single channel, and that way you're confused and you're on the yeah, wrong channel. Exactly, because you don't want to be telling the wrong person right. the wrong things. But you know, yep. that happens, though, right? I guess. Yeah, evidently. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> evidently. Man. I guess. Oops. I mean, I, I personally never held the uh, a taser that, that cops carry, or the gun for that matter. No. But it would seem to me there's got to be a difference. Now, I would say. And just the feeling well, of what I was, each one now, is. Now, I would say this. If, well, if the picture that I saw. 
is correct. Of uh, the revolver he was carrying, it was a small one. And if if you look at the tasers that the the, the cops carry on their belts, if he had the same the same issue stuff, it's kind of propped on their belt like a pistol. Yeah, it is. You know, so now if you really are not understanding, okay, my pistol on my left, my taser on my right, I can see if you don't have proper training how you might confuse them because it has a grip and everything. So you you pull it and you shoot it, you know. So I I mean. Not making excuses, but I, I I don't know. My thing is the man was screaming as he was on the ground, and they had their knee to his neck. Yes. He's screaming, he shot me, he shot me. A- and the dude said, I shot him. I'm sorry. That's what the guy said. I'm losing my breath. And the other the other two the two cops, you know, I, they said they, they didn't realize he was shot. The man F your the, breath. You exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, he shot breath. me. I'm sorry I shot you. I'm losing my breath. No, nah, you got to get breath. down, though. Like, F your breath. That's sad, man. That bullet ain't enough. This knee to the back of the head. You know, that's how, they, that's how it happens sometimes. That's crazy. How does the dude sit there saying, I shot him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know he got shot. And you standing right there <laughs> with your knee on his neck. On his head, I'm sorry. The, the, the bigger question is, why? you know they didn't care at that point. Exactly. He was a criminal as far as they were concerned. Criminals get what they deserve. Basically, like they and that's how they feel. And now the cops, they're supposed to be a cop, hopefully gets what he deserves. Well, they're charged, they're charged with, with manslaughter. With manslaughter. They, could, so, they could probably make that stick. And with the fact that he on the scene on video well, saying, here's the question. I shot him. Not so much can they make that stick. Does this actually go to trial? Does it go to trial? Or do but, they? Well, he might take a plea. Or they take a plea. He might take a plea. Or do they take a plea? Exactly. No, he's 73. He's friends with the mayor, if I'm not mistaken. He's friends with the whole town. He's, yeah. They say Very he's, affluent. He's one of the uh, biggest donors to the police department. Yeah, so there's a plea coming down the line with a reduced charge. Because they were actually. A, with his old age, we're not going to require him to they, serve any time. They are about to. Uh, had it been up to the police department, they had closed that case. The county sheriff's office had closed the case and were ready to move on. Yeah. So moving on. Moving it on. was outside influence that brought this case uh, to where we are. The police department has shut that down as an accidental shooting, and, you know, it happens. Well, they say <laughs> he paid big money to play a cop. Right. He, was yeah. a, he said he was a big-time donor for the Oklahoma uh, police department. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. Uh, again, man, another unfortunate uh, shooting of uh, an un- unarmed black man. Mm. Mm-hmm. 407-894-1680 is the number, 407-894-1680. You know, speaking of uh, of that, there's still protests going on. There's actually a protest going on right now where people are marching uh, from New York into Washington, D.C. Um, in support of gaining some traction on some legislation uh, that will kind of put some changes in place to not, not just hopefully prevent these things from happening but uh but at least so that if they do happen there's a legislation in place so that the proper results should happen in terms of somebody being charged somebody being held accountable uh for this particular act but they're marching from uh D- new york into dc and actually walking the entire way uh from new york to dc they, they actually uh organized it so that they're staying in churches uh, along the interstate and spending the night. So that's good. A lot of protests still going on. I know there were some protests I read about the other day as well where uh, there were some arrests involved in New York and a few other cities as well. So people are still protesting about it. Uh, the protests are a lot smaller. I heard the, mar- the, the people that were marching, I think they were in the low hundreds, if that. Uh, I think maybe about 100, I should say, maybe a little less. And then, of course, since they're marching and walking, you know, you got people that are probably going to be joining in for a few right. for a few miles here and there as well. Well, the camera's up. Right. I'm sorry. Right. I'm right. sorry. Did I say that? Well, I'm not. And I'm not talking about prominent figures. I'm just talking about people uh, that, that are just, you know, want to support, but they just can't, you know, I to spare the time to, you know, because it's a nine day. That's nine days to, to take to walk from New York to D.C. So you got to have some free time. You got to have some dedication. <laughs> You got to have some free time on your hands. You just can't going to just say. Hey. I want to, do you call off and work for it? Even, it's not or do even, you just say, I'm, I'm taking some off. vacation That's time. a vacation. Yeah. That's a vacation. Nine now, shout, shout out to the bosses who understand and let the workers off. Shoot, that's what I'm saying. Because, I mean, that's serious. You're talking about nine days. You know, a lot of jobs, they're like, oh, I'm really not going to need you anymore. <laughs> so, for real, shout out to people letting them off work so they can protest. Yeah, exactly. 
All right, man. The other uh, story that I wanted to get to here was the uh, New York cheating scandal. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, what happened here. In Atlanta. Atlanta, I'm sorry. The Atlanta cheating scandal. Now, the actual scandal or the cheating that occurred actually happened a few, uh, they caught them a few years ago. What we were at is now we're at the conviction stage is where they were a week ago, well, to almost two weeks ago now. Um, and they got convicted of racketeering and a few other charges. Um, but that, that's let's start there. They got convicted of racketeering because there was a group of teachers, principals, um, and even uh, superintendents in the Atlanta district that organized uh, organized cheating where they were either one teaching the students what exactly what would be on the test answers um, that would be on the standardized test that they were going to be taking. Um, and so they did that for some students. And then for other students, they would take the test. And then once they took the test, they would then take the Scantron sheets of the test and then correct them so that they would reflect the correct answers. So that that's what they did. And they did this over um, a period of a few years before they got caught. And so we got to that, you know, again, the, the conviction stage. And so in the conviction stage, they got convicted of racketeering and a few other charges. But the racketeering is the one that really caught me off guard because typically when you hear about racketeering, we hear about racketeering in, in, uh, in terms of mobs. Yeah, mobs, criminal organizations. Criminal organizations, gangs, things of that nature. Because it's, it's basically, it's uh yeah, because like when you, if I'm not mistaken, when you you, you establish a racketeering, you basically benefiting from a financially from a criminal act. If I'm not mistaken, I mean I don't know if that's the exact definition, but in general, I believe that's what it is. Yeah, the, the defini definition says uh, a criminal activity that is performed to benefit an organization such as a crime sy syndicate. Um, some examples include extortion, money laundering, loan sharking, obstruction of justice, and bribery. So that's what typically you see the charge for. But so, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to get off subject. Never mind, go ahead. But in this case, we saw teachers who were organizing cheating on the standardized tests being convicted of racketeering. And, of course, they're all black. It's yeah, Atlanta. It's Atlanta. And they're all black. Here's yeah. what hit me. What I, as I was researching the story, one of the things I didn't realize at the time was that the DA... It's also black. No, I'm still not shocked. I mean, it is Atlanta. <laughs> I mean, right. It is you Atlanta. You get elected. So. It is Atlanta, but, yeah, the DA is black. Well, all the all the defendants was black. Well, you, it, it, well, think about it like this now. Because when you're talking to DA, remember, you st you're talking politics. You know, you're not just a prosecutor. You're a politician, too, because you're an elected official. So the biggest cheating scandal that hit the country, now you got to put your DA hat on. What are you really gonna do? Because when you, when you step from the DA's office, you either step into a mayor or a congressional seat or a state senator or a U.S. senator seat, or what you really, really want, you step into a judge seat. So when these type of cases come across your desk, you got to make a splash. So I understand why he really reached for the charges. He's like, I'm gonna get him for everything I can. This is national news, you, and you know the mayor done talking to him. The county commissioners, everybody didn't talk to him. We we got to. This is national news. You, we we got to make make it look like we not tolerate none of this. You know the judge already been talked to. That's why he handed down what he handed down. <laughs> but I give it to the judge. He was trying to be nice. He gave them opportunity. But I'm not shocked. But remember, they started for the racket. Shocked about the racketeering because they said the reason is because with them doing the cheating, that actually influenced their bonuses and stuff. So they they possibly benefited financially from it now whether that was their main goal or whether it was just a, a, a goal of we trying to make sure our jobs are secure i don't know but well you know there's been when you there's been a lot of legislation lately um you, what, the child left behind no child left behind uh pr president obama's race to the top right. uh, program they there's a lot of information relating being a good teacher based on the test scores that your students are earning mm -hmm. um, and on these standardized tests. Right. So your label as a good teacher, uh, potentially bonuses, most schools aren't really probably giving out bonuses. There might be uh, 
sometimes if you're one of the top performing schools in your district, you might get a bit, um, the school may get some extra money and maybe your principal de decides to give out some of that extra money to the teachers. Uh, you may see that happen, but a lot of times I'm sure they're keeping the money and using it for some from some school purpose um, if they're getting it. But but in this case, I don't think it was so much about getting bonuses because we, we're not talking about we're talking about students who probably would have not passed at all are now right. passing. Right. So it's not so much that they, yeah, they were scoring out outrageous numbers here. It right. was just that they were scoring numbers now that were a little bit more respectable. Right. And so uh, I doubt they got bonuses, but one of the things they talked about is there's a lot of pressure in the school district yep. at the time exactly. about meeting the numbers and making sure that you met the numbers that were supposed to be there. Uh, but even in all of that, though, man, when, when you look at precedence, to me it's all about precedence. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is obviously not the first time a scandal has occurred. Correct. Um, this is obviously not the first time a scandal has occurred. Remember, you can call us and discuss this with us, 407-894-1680, 407-894-1680. But it is or the- Or 407-299-3946. Yeah, 407-299-3946. Thank you, sir. But but what's interesting here, though, is, is the precedence. So has there or have any of the other cases where there has been organized cheating on a standardized test resulted in uh, resulted in racketeering and the, the clear answer there is no there's no there, there's not even been a teaching case where I mean a case where a teacher actually served jail time let alone be convicted of uh, racketeering or anything so there's you know there's not even precedent for jail time uh, I agree. You know, there's not there's but, no precedence for jail time. But I'm a I'm a I'm I'm gonna go back to the judge. The judge gave them ample opportunity. He like it's like I'm trying to be nice. I understand what this case is. Do you understand what the charges that they convicted you of? You know, and, and I blame their lawyers to be honest with you. The ones who who the, the ones who took that big charge, who took that prison time, I bring their lawyers, because there's no way in the world that you should have let your client do any serious time when it wasn't necessary. It wasn't necessary. He offered them like, look, you can you can you can go home. You just gotta admit that you were wrong. Nope. Uh uh, I ain't do nothing wrong. I'm just trying to get the test scores up. Well, whatever they were saying, I don't know what they said, but I'm just 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 inferring something. I'm trying to figure out what their mindset was when that judge said, "Hey, you can admit what you're wrong. Take these six months, which you can do the weekend time, pay your fines and all that. And, you know, so you're not gonna be terribly inconvenienced." No, I'm beating this. Okay. But no, I mean, obviously they were convicted. I'm, so sorry, I'm saying, okay. So much, well, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, them lawyer, maybe the lawyers talking about something. We go get it on appeal. I don't know what they were advising. But you get convicted. See, that, do you understand? See, that's when we, we, we let to all the people, do. if you ever go up on trial for anything, if the deal comes down, obviously you got a lawyer, and I'm not saying ignore the lawyer, but go and look up the definitions of the things you've been convicted of. Because if you're lucky enough that after they convict you, they still try to show you leniency. Look into what they're trying to do now. Don't just like, no, 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 no. Don't be so defiant. Because they could have got off with six months on straight weekend time, which means Monday through Friday, if you're able to obtain another job, good luck with that. You can <laughs> you can still live your life Monday through Friday. You just got to turn yourself on the weekend and do your time. You know, probation, I think it was a $5,000 fine, I believe it is. Well, no, I mean, there were several different, for those that took plea deals, yeah. there were several different. Um, it was several different ones. Several different plea deals they took. But you wouldn't have got them 20 years with the mandatory seven, which which I think was the greatest one. And some of them was The what? ones that actually let the judge decide their fate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, man, I, I just don't understand that, bro. Like I said, I don't know. Maybe your, maybe the lawyers say, okay, on appeal, we go, we'll beat this. And if they do, good luck to them. But come on, man. I don't see nothing they did wrong. That's the, my whole thing. Now, now what they did? I, now, from a moral stand, yes, they were wrong. What What were they wrong for? Were Changing they, answers to the state. I mean, they were wrong. <laughs> if you get, if you, you get, if you that. in college and you get caught cheating, you go get kicked out of school. So you know I mean that that now you were wrong for that. Now my thing was if if you 
this is a process of of going on with this like four or five years, possibly more. They did this. To me, it'd been more beneficial if you had an issue with with the merit or or your reviews coming with test scores is to fight for is your union. Use that union power to say this is not going to work. You know, especially if you in, the, in an area where you know these kids are struggling just to make the the minimum. Because I mean, for me, what it seems like is the whole case got got under wrap, and people start seeing, wow, they passing this test, and they never did it before. Or, or probably the scores, the scores that they got. Uh, uh, it was something that that raised the flag somewhere. But but that's the thing, though. People wasn't passing the test. That's that's why I say. That's why so, I say to me, that's something they could have fought with from within. Like in this area and with these students, we had a disadvantage. So exactly. to me, to me, it's like. You could go through your union and and work it that route as opposed to having this big thing where y'all run around changing answers. I mean, and and, and the racketeer thing now it's crazy to do sound, but you if you look at all the people involved, I mean, you got people at the testing center, you got teachers, you got school administrators. So this is an organization. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> I mean, I they was, this is organized. This is deep. not this is not like I'm calling my homeboy and he can hook me up. I mean, this is ran again, man. I mean, you got emails got to be flying around, texts, phone calls. I mean, this is a deep thing. This wasn't. This was like a big plan. Right. I mean, like, like they said, they would be, they would actually set up a meeting, um, and so the meeting would happen at some location, and then once they should organize how they would attest for how they that's were gonna. Where, that's where your racketeering charge came in at <laughs> because they met. See, it's like remember, remember back in the day when they were trying to catch the mob. The, the biggest thing they could say they could never catch them together in a meeting. To, 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 so you can say they're a criminal organization, they're meeting to establish, you know, plans to do whatever. Mm. I, I can't get with it. How you doing, I, Jay Henry? <laughs> What's up? Uh, we were talking about the Atlanta. Hey. I'm doing all right, man. We, we're sitting here talking not, about the Atlanta cheating scandal. <laughs> and uh, basically, Jeremy has uh, validated <laughs> the charges against Hey, all I'm saying <laughs> is if the judge lays six months weekend time on the table as opposed to 20 years, you got to take the six months. That's all I'm saying. What's, what's your thoughts, man? <laughs> what's your thoughts, man? I, I mean, the, the the biggest thing that kind of took me aback was the racketeering charge that was connected to to the so-called cheating. Um, because I, I get it. They're saying that if the students do better, then that's tied to the pay or, or tied to administrative pay, and that um, they could have potentially gotten a pay bump. But, I mean, racketeering? Like, racketeering connected to teachers? That just sounds all kind of wrong. And the other side of it was some of those some of the teachers who received the harsher sentences, um, they turned down plea deals. And I think that some of them could have gotten a one year sentence, but I guess if you're thinking, Look, I'm going to take my chances on trial because I don't really think I did anything bad, you're not thinking that maybe on the back end you could go to prison for the next seven years of your life. So more than anything, I just thought it was uh, just a little bit too excessive. Uh, exactly. At the end of the day, hey. man. It is that is that listen, is way listen, too excessive. Even, all I'm, even a year all in jail. I'm, is all way I'm too saying excessive. is, if if I, next year, if it turns out this DA is running for the circuit judge, don't be surprised. This, I'm telling you, man. I watch Law and Order. This how they do it. <laughs> <laughs> this how they do it. The landmark case come through. It's like yes, he got this landmark case. Next season, they running for mayor. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how, I mean, you got the DA is a political position. You know, they they can't let this come through and he try to slide under the rug and hand out plea deals. Everybody going to be, he can't get back in office. That's crazy. I mean, just, just the entire case is crazy. Um, this has been going on for a while. Um, I remember, and, and somebody can correct me on this if I'm wrong, maybe one of the students, superintendents, or um, someone who was hired up the food chain ended up passing away due to breast cancer. Yeah. yeah while yeah. this is happening. So, I mean, it's been going on for a while. It's a, an unfortunate situation. And sound cliche. Nobody thought about the children. <laughs> yeah. Now, you said it right. <laughs> they, they weren't thinking about the children. Yeah, because the, the actual incident, the last incident that they had in question was in 2009. So it's it, we're six years removed from the actual last incident that they were concerned about. Seven years and, you know, thousands of hours of community service. Come on, though. It's, it, like I said, it's too much. I, I mean, obviously, they need they should have all been fired. Obviously, they should have all uh, lost their teacher's license um, and should, you know, pretty much never teach again, for that matter. Um, and, and, you know, sure, so maybe some probation, maybe some, some community service, maybe a fine, but, you know, jail time. And, and like I was saying earlier, there's no precedence for this. There's nobody that's been involved in this type of... It is now. Uh, ...in this type of criminal activity <laughs> that has ever been sent to jail. 
And so now the first people that go to jail are the black teachers and principals um, being prosecuted by the black prosecutor. Hey. Like, really? The black buster. He, <laughs> like, really? Hey, that black prosecutor, he want to be the governor of, of, of Georgia one day. And he goes sit up and say, look, I'm hard with the black people too. So he can get that other vote because that's all so important. I'm just saying. <laughs> Like, y'all I, y'all I, can't be some. I mean, that's what that's that's where I'm coming from. I'm not saying he's right, but I'm just saying I believe that's where he's coming from. He has to look like I'm a harsh. I'm I'm not. I don't show any favorites. I'm coming down on everybody. You know. Just sad, man. Is what it yeah, is. Yeah, and, and, and it's exactly. Sad. It's a sad, sad situation. Um, I mean, just to encompass everything, it's sad. It's unfortunate, but I, I just. I can't get off of the racketeering part. Like, you that's something that's reserved for members of the mob. Racketeering, racketeering. attached to teachers and administrators for, um, you know, standardized teaching tests. And the, the interesting part about this is that No Child Left Behind is currently being rewritten, where they are easing the federal testing standards, and states will no longer be required to attach the results, student results to teacher, um, to teacher pay. So this is what this all stemmed from, that the federal government was pushing states to basically say, hey, if your students do better, then, you know, bump them up and pay. If your students do better, then uh, your school will get more money. That's all being rewritten and erased. And now these, you know, these uh, administrators are going to prison for seven years for something that may not even be a law anymore. It's just sad, man. <laughs> and like I said, what's even sadder, the black prosecutor to the black teachers. <laughs> Come on. I read I read a case where there was a lady who was cheating on some standardized tests and she wound up being a a uh a consultant in order to help fix the test. <laughs> so, so that it wouldn't be so that it'd be uh scored better uh, that was convenient. for future students. Come on. But they but they're convicted of racketeering. They in the wrong state <laughs> Serving seven years. with the wrong prosecutor. <laughs> Clearly. Clearly, okay, man. very much so. Clearly, but uh, we'll, we'll move on from that, man. Four seven eight nine four sixteen eighty is the number. Four seven eight nine four sixteen eighty. So obviously, the big uh, big news this week: we had uh, Hillary Clinton uh, officially announce her candidacy uh, for president. Uh, so it's finally here, Jason. We we it's official. She is running because we didn't know fifteen years ago that this day was coming. <laughs> what, now, your, we didn't know when Obama stepped there into the ground in 2007 that this was coming. Right, yeah. right, right, right. What's your thoughts, man? What, you, what are you thinking about Hillary, man? Uh, I mean, pretty much what everybody else thinks, I guess. Um, you, we, we knew that this was eventually going to happen. It was one of America's worst kept secrets, just like Marco Rubio announcing that he was going to run for president this past Monday. That was a, a, a terribly kept secret. Um, you know, uh, Let's just hope her campaign goes much better than it did in 2007. I don't think you're going to see a Barack Obama pop out of the woodwork like he did back then. Um, I don't think um, it, it's like Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, you know, that once in a generation type of athlete. You know, Barack Obama isn't necessarily a once in a generation politician, but what he represented and his team and everything that came along with him may have been once in a generation because he changed the way we, we view politics, he changed the way. We operated in politics by bringing analytics into the fold or, or bringing a better version, I guess, of analytics into the fold. And, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton just has to ensure that she does not do anything that's going to ruin her chances. I mean, her, her rollout was just meh. You know, she had that four-minute long commercial and at the end said that, uh, you know, yeah, she's, she's getting ready to run for president, as, you know, we already knew that. Um, you didn't like the commercial, man? I, I, I mean, honestly, I thought it was something from The Onion, to be real. I really did because she's standing in front of this home in front of some stairs and she's saying, I'm getting ready to do something too. It, it looked like a Saturday Night Live skit. That's what it looked like. I wanted to skip that bomb that's supposed to be funny, but it's not. Um, but I mean, I, that one, I think, you know, that's not that big of a deal because it's just her announcing what she's going to do. Um, you know, what she does in Iowa and New Hampshire and Florida and, and some of the other swing states like Ohio and Pennsylvania, um, that's when, you know, the rubble will, will meet the road for her. But it, it just depends on what type of primary she has and and who she tries to represent, because, you know, right now it sounds like she's trying to copy off of what Senator Elizabeth Warren is saying, because her message is basically based on populism. And, you know, Hillary has a lot of ties to Wall Street, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but just, meh. Meh, so far, huh? 
All right. Well, Jim, what are you thinking about Hillary Clinton running, man? Again, like, are are we shocked? It's, it's, it, it, to me, it almost seemed like like when uh, when uh, President Obama beat her in uh like I said in 2007, it was almost like they just told her, okay, just sit back, you know, and wait your turn. You know, we need somebody. We don't have any, we don't really have anybody just in the woodworks with a name or anything of that nature to come up next. So you know, say you you kind of just you know almost I want to say by default you next in line. You know, we'll give you that push. It's up to you not to mess up. That's why I'm sure they was upset when these, when these emails came, but came out. She's like, now, come on, bro. Didn't we just tell you? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we tell you just to sit back and chill? <laughs> now, I don't think she's going to be the president. I was having this conversation with somebody else. I don't think the world is ready for the, the, the female president yet. I think it'll be somebody else that'll jump out in the race later on and that will be like, yeah, yeah, that's the one we want. But, you know, as of now, like you say, we were already knowing that she was going to run. It was already known. It was not a surprise at all. So I Man, think it's wait, 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 wait. If Hillary then become president, she is going to come to every voter's house with a double barrel shotgun <laughs> and demand that you vote for her. This is going down nah, yeah. for her this time. I, I know a lot of people who don't even want to work for but who? But let me ask you this. Who's going to raise, at least on the Democratic side, who's going to raise enough money to really challenge her? I, don't I mean, y'all tell right. me I'm not plugged you, you in. You gotta like wait. Somebody gonna jump in now. Well, somebody jumping in. What you in, think, Jay? Here, I, I don't. Somebody uh, at least on, in. on the Democratic side. Somebody uh, jumping I, I in, but nobody's gonna. I don't think anybody can raise enough money to beat her. Yeah. Now, if we're talking about money, then that's a totally different story. I mean, I, I saw a story today where they said that Hollywood, Hollywood, where Barack Obama got a lot of his money from the first time he ran, is uh, they are everybody supposedly who's a liberal in Hollywood is is behind Hillary this time. And we haven't seen, I mean, it's like, you remember when John Huntsman ran back in 2000 and, was it 2008 or maybe 2012, I can't remember, and he supposedly was supposed to be the moderate version of a Republican, and a lot of people were saying, hey, if, if there wasn't Barack Obama, maybe I could get behind him, or if he could come out of the primary on the Republican side, he may be an okay candidate. We may see something like that on the Democratic side, but as of right now, I, just, I don't see anybody. But like like my man Michael said, there could be somebody to jump out like Barack Obama did. It's all about messaging, in, in my opinion. And, and, and the, the better your message, the more money uh, that will become attached to it. So somebody could come out and trump her message where they're saying, yeah, what she's saying may be okay, but listen to what I'm saying. And people are saying, hmm, I actually can get behind that better than I can with Hillary. Then, yeah, maybe we can, you know, see something a little bit uh, tougher for her down the road. But like I said, man, Bill and Hillary will come and jack everybody up if it doesn't go down this time <laughs> it's not going down i'm sorry miss mccray but it's not going down man I'm, I'm not trying to be a hater it's just i just don't see it i don't foreshadow that in the future well like i said on the democratic side i don't i don't see any other candidates that are going to really step in and take over uh the only the only other formidable candidate people even discussed on the democratic side is elizabeth warren so we're talking about another female uh, there is no male contender that even my nobody's even discussing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there's always somebody that they're discussing, but in this particular case, yeah. they're not even discussing and, and another he, candidate. You don't got long uh, either, bro. male or female that they even feel like is going to be a uh, a challenger. And we're in the season, so pretty much if they don't say anything within the next three to four months, they ain't saying nothing. Well, I got three to four so, months. <laughs> Three to four. So we'll, we'll see, man. It's going to be interesting. My my problem with Hillary is I, I just don't see what she's done. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, what has she really done? I mean, she's obviously held some positions. So let me not say she's not done anything. She couldn't even hold down her man. She, I she, don't want to hear that. <laughs> if you can't hold down your man, what you gonna hold down the country, man? Please. <laughs> but I mean, when your man is the president, that's different. That's the hey, that's the only job you got is to hold down your man. Nah, I'm they, sorry. They're not even worried about I that. Think, but, yeah, I think more than anything. Um, just like they did last time, you look through her senatorial record, uh, her, her time as Secretary of State will be uh, scrutinized heavily uh, this time around. So if, if we're looking for, you know, specific policy or bills passed, that's going to be tough because, remember, Barack Obama faced the same criticism when he was just a junior senator of what have you done, what have you accomplished, you know, what can we point to to say that you deserve this position, and nobody can really come up with much. And even though Hillary Clinton has been around for a long time, a long time, we'll just have to look back in her past. Listen, she sat on the board of Walmart in the 80s, 
up until like 92, from like 84 to 92, when they were fighting against unions. That's something that a lot of people on the left are going to be against. Mm-hmm. But again, it, it's going to be up to other individuals to figure out if that's something that they, you know, can gel with when, when or if, you know, she gets the, uh, the nomination. But it'll be up to individuals to really scrutinize her record because you're not going to see anything, I think, of substance. You'll see some things about emails and Hillary care and, and some things, you know, some things she may have said while she was uh, Secretary of State. But as far as, you know, votes and bills and uh, her time as a lawyer, she was named one of the most, uh, one of the 100, top 100 most influential lawyers in America, I think, before, it, it, I think it was in the 80s. This is before uh, Clinton, I think, got his second term as, as governor of Arizona, of, of Arkansas. So if you look back on her history prior maybe to her entrance into the national political stage, you'll be able to figure out maybe how she viewed the world prior to that. But as far as trying to get a grasp on what she's specifically done, that may be a little tougher to do because she hasn't necessarily been in that type of leadership position where she can um, hand down policy like a governor or a president can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was looking at uh, I was looking at a post the other day. Uh, Bruce, uh, Congressman Bruce Antone had posted on his uh, on his Facebook page. He was talking about what he thought her accomplishments were. Um, some of the things he pointed out, uh, obviously, she was first lady during the uh, when her husband was uh, president, President Clinton, which was 92 to 2000. He referenced the fact that, like you just talked about, uh, Jason, she was one of the top lawyers in the country uh, when she was a lawyer. She obviously served as a she won New York Senate seat for eight years. Um, she is also secretary of state, as we know. Uh, one of the other key things that I think no other candidate is going to be able to say is during her time as Secretary of State, she probably met every single world leader, um, or at least most of them. Um, and I don't think anybody's going to have the ability to say that, uh, whoever decides to run. Um, and so from that, she certainly has a good grasp on what foreign policy or what, what our foreign policy is now as to what you think about how she would handle it. You know, that's obviously going to vary depending on what side of the uh, coin you you flip. But but at least she's at least she is in the know of every single partner. So that is an accomplishment that no other candidate is going to be able to say. So that that will at least be interesting. But I don't know. I'm just not excited about uh, what I what I call the third time a Clinton is in office. You know, the first Clinton, Obama and now potentially Hillary. So, <laughs> you know, and, and some people view the Obama administration as a, a secondary Clinton administration because he picked so many individuals who were aligned with Clinton, exactly. um, you know, to litter his cabinet. Look at Rahm Emanuel. He was, uh, he was with the Clinton administration uh, the first time around, and I think the second time around as well. But I, I think if we view this, you know, out of, um, out of a lens that's a little bit clearer, we can see that, yeah, I mean, some of these things, Secretary of State, Senator from New York, First Lady, all those are leadership positions, and the way that you can view it as to if she was a good leader or not, not necessarily by the accomplishments that happened under, but, you know, did the world catch on fire? Right? How many wars have we been involved in? You know, so on and so forth. And with Secretary of State, you mentioned she logged, and I could be wrong on this, she logged the most hours in the air, I believe, ever for Secretary of State because she went to meet so many different leaders and dignitaries from across the world. So... If we look at, you know, her time um, there, if we look at her time as First Lady, if we look at her time as Senator, then she's, she's done a lot as far as leadership is concerned, but it's just a matter of how you view it. And like you said, do you want that type of leadership style in the White House? We're going to find out, man. It's going to be interesting uh, to see how this all plays out. Like you said, I'm sure there's going to be another player that jumps in, whether or not they'll they'll be able to compare remains to be seen, but there'll be another player um, on the Democratic side as well, and we'll see how it goes, but I, I know personally, I'm just, I'm not a big fan, I'm not looking forward to it, and uh, I wish we'd have, they would have brought somebody else out of the work works, because we know, at least with Hillary, the Democratic machine is going to be behind her this time. They they owe her, is, is the way a lot of people view it, that's how I view it. <laughs> they, I'm sure they've let them know that they owe her <laughs> this yeah, opportunity. I mean, I, I wouldn't, and so uh, I wouldn't be they better get this. So, you know, like I said, it, it's it's interesting how 
they're not talking about anybody. I mean, you look at the Republican side and we they're talking about Rand Paul. They're talking about uh, Marco Rubio, which we'll do in a second here. They're talking about uh, Ted Cruz. They're talking about Chris Christie. They're talking about Jeb Bush. You know, they're talking about some of the other governors out there. I mean, we're talking about 10 or, 10 or 15 different people, it seems, on the Republican side. But on the Democratic side, it's like, well, you know, this race is Hillary's. <laughs> so it's, it's just interesting. You know, like I said, the machine is behind her this time. And it would seem like she's being crowned the Democratic candidate right now. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, though. We'll see what happens. Deserved or not, uh, we'll see what happens. For me, I, I think ultimately I just see it as a loss for the people because we're really not getting an opportunity to really vet any particular candidate in this particular scenario because we we're being, on the Democratic side anyway, you're being given Hillary. Like, here is our candidate. Here she is. You know, let them be the only people that destroy her because we know the media is going to be with her. So <laughs> it's the only people that are going to destroy her. If you don't listen to Fox News, you probably won't hear very few. You'll have very few negative comments <laughs> about Hillary. So she's being crowned as far as I'm concerned. But we'll see what happens, man. It is it is still what, April and uh, the obviously the election is, doesn't happen until November. So there's a lot of things that could change in, in between now and then. But it's, so far, she seems to be wearing the crown. <laughs> so, hey, so far, well, we have a long way to go, so we'll see what actually happens. So, long three months. Uh, but do, yeah, we, yeah, but do we have long months. enough for somebody to just come out the woodworks and contest her? It's, in, never in some, it's somebody that you know, somebody that you done seen, but you didn't think. And that's how it's going to be. Okay. Mm. I, I don't know. We'll see. Because Barack Obama didn't come out the woodworks. He started his campaign when he started campaigning around this time. and So he campaigned for almost two years. Actually, he might even started earlier. So I mean, but not remember when he did that speech, it was already the rums in the bottom. You remember? So it was like, like you said, he didn't just come out of nowhere. It was like it was already but in the... See, uh, yeah, he, he, did, he made that speech at the 04 convention, and, and people started saying, hey, maybe this guy can be president. Yeah. But and, and technically, he didn't come out of nowhere, but a lot of people thought he did because, listen, I remember when he was elected senator, a lot of people were like, who... <laughs> like, could, you know, couldn't pronounce his name. Right. And then when he started running for president, they're like, "Ah, oh, that black dude ain't got a chance." And then when he went Iowa, they were like, "Wait a minute, maybe <laughs> he actually has an opportunity." So yeah. until you know you have a candidate, they can prove that they can go toe to toe with Hillary like Barack did. Then it will be, yeah, this is Hillary's to lose. But until that point, you know, we'll, we'll basically be where we are. We will. We will. Let's go on. Let's keep it moving. Let's talk about uh, Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio is running now. Yeah, well, it's official that he's running now, I should say. So he, he's, the, he's the next up. What, what do you think about Marco Rubio, Jason? Um, I think Marco Rubio is not ready to be president. I think he knows that. I think more than anything, this is him jockeying for position to be Jeb's vice president. Um, mm -hmm. This reminds me kind of in House of Cards, uh, spoiler alert, if anybody's listening and, and wants to finish watching. Uh, well, kind of a spoiler alert. One of the... Um, House, uh, the House Majority Whip was running for president against Frank Underwood, but she was really just doing it to jockey for a position for the vice uh, presidency deal. They had already worked this out behind the scenes before she even announced. Right. And this could be the same case with Marco Rubio. I don't think he's ready. He's just a junior senator who hasn't completed his, his, uh, a full term. The same thing happened with Barack Obama. I get it. We've seen some of the issues where Barack, it took some time for him to grow into that position, which... It's going to take anybody some time to grow into being president. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just want somebody with a little bit more experience. And, I mean, to be honest, I just don't think intellectually we can compare the two. And uh, based off of foreign policy and maybe what they've done and, and, and some of the views that he holds, no. I, I do not believe that he will become president. I do not believe he will make it out of uh, the primaries. I believe that maybe after, who knows, Super Tuesday, whenever happens, he's going to Say, so, you know what, this has been a great experience, it's been a great ride, um, I'm going to throw all of my support behind Jeb Bush, and then maybe some months later you'll see you know, him come out, Jeb come out and say, hey, I'm going to choose Barack, I mean, uh, Marco Rubio to be my vice president or have some type of high-ranking cabinet position. But I think he knows this isn't his time. Hmm. You know, I actually like Marco Rubio uh, as a candidate um, because I think, at least so far, Not the shocked, field that no. we... Not shocked. Well, well, hear me out. At least so far in the field, you. in the field that we're looking at, we were talking sure. about Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, uh, Jeb Bush, and then Marco Rubio. Those are the confirmed ones. Chris Christie uh, made a statement the other day to let us know he was at least still considering it. 
Um, he said he's going to let us know in about three months, he said. But but when you think about those other guys, to me, Marco Rubio, like President Obama, he has that charisma where he can talk to people. You know, Obama had that charisma where he can talk to people. He has the smile. Obama had the smile. Um, and so he sort of has some of those charismatic attributes that I think can at least push him over. Not so much whether or not he's ready, because, I mean, I think that's always relative. But uh, but just those characteristics that help push you over to help win people who, who may or may not may have been checking for you. But after hearing you talk, after seeing how you move, or at least a little swayed, you know, can be swayed, I should say, uh, towards your direction. And I think that, to me, is what's interesting about it. Because the other candidates are sort of, you either like them or you don't. You know, Ted Cruz is, is now infamous for being the no senator. Um, that is his stamp of approval, you know, and I don't think he's ever going to get above that. So for those swing voters, you're just going to see no. You know, and I don't know, you know, he's going to be loved on the uh, Tea Party. They're going to love him. Tea Party is going to think he's the greatest thing in the world since like uh, since since white bread. But but beyond that, beyond that, that I don't see him going very far. Rand Paul is uh, he's the libertarian candidate, really. And, you know, people like libertarian ideas, but nobody really likes the libertarian <laughs> so, candidate. You know what I'm saying? They just dare to take <laughs> you know, just ask his father how well that went over. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, so when you think about those other guys and then Bush, Jeb Bush, while he's going to have the money, I think he's still going to have a problem with the name, man. Nobody wants another Bush. You know, his, his brother ruined the name. And, and and besides the Republican Party wanting to push all the money behind him, I just don't really think people are sold on the idea of another Bush. I think I think people almost take a Clinton before they take a Bush is what I think most people would. would, would uh, yes, I would probably agree with you there. Would, 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 you know, so so to me, he has, Rubio has that, he has that thing that the same thing that you would say Barack Obama had he has that. Now, again, that does have nothing to do with whether or not he's ready, but he has that thing, and I think that's that's what's going to at least keep his name in the fray. I, he may not win the uh, candidacy, but he at least may be up there because he has that that thing, that thing that you know you can't buy that. It's just I think there. that thing is, is, you know, what they call in football intangible, something that you can't measure. Right. Where you say, yeah, he, he knows how to win. We can't necessarily tell you how he does it, but he just gets it done. And that's, I mean, that, that's so crazy. Like, I mean, look, if we look at it, Barack Obama, Marco Rubio, both of them um, are, you know, supposedly handsome men. Both of them are articulate. Both of them are professional. Both of them look good in a suit. And we look at that and we're like, hey, maybe this guy may be all right. <laughs> and then, you know, if we take a closer look at their policies, we probably have a different idea of who they are. So, you know, yeah, M Marco Rubio may have that thing, but isn't he pretty short? And, I mean, that's not necessarily a knock on short people, but we don't necessarily elect short presidents. Usually we like them tall and left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> that may be a knock on him, but but I'm telling you, he's got that he's got that thing, man. He's got that thing. I you know I'm not liking the thing, you know. I'm not saying I, I hope he gets the nomination or anything, but but when it comes to you, when you look at the field, he's the only one that has that thing, and and people love that thing. That's hey, man, what, don't, they don't, love that. Don't thing. Chris Christie has that lap band. He's still losing weight. He could end up having that thing. If uh, Ted Cruz stops slicking, he's, if he stops slicking his hair back with spit, he may have that thing. If Rand Paul, <laughs> um, you know, if, if maybe he gets a, uh, gets rid of that curly top afro that he has, he may have that thing. So I, I think more than anything for Republicans, you're going to need somebody a little bit more moderate or, or someone who's viewed as more moderate like Jeb Bush. And even though, yeah, he has the wrong last name, I think a lot of what he has to say and a lot of his potential policies are going to line up with the majority of the Republican Party. Not necessarily something that uh, Marco Rubio, who is of Cuban descent, or Ted Cruz, or uh, maybe even Scott Walker. And Scott Walker could be a dark horse um, because he, he's coming out of Wisconsin. Um, he's done a lot to union bust and to get rid of a lot of Democratic policies in Wisconsin. Uh, so you should probably look out for him, too. Um, but, you know, I, I just don't think Marco Rubio has enough heft, uh, and, and that, that'll be shown. I think that's going to be one of his glaring weaknesses when, you know, he really gets uh, gets out, because you're going to have some Republican debates coming up this August and September where you'll be able to uh, listen to some of the things he has to say. Mm. We'll, we'll see, man. We'll see. 
But I, but I think you're doubting the thing, man. As we like I said, you, <laughs> you go back to President Obama. You know, I, I remember that. I mean, to me, he wasn't. It wasn't so much that he had that much more to say. It was just that he had that thing. You know, <laughs> he just had that thing. I mean, his whole thing at that time was hope and change. You know, I mean, anybody can sell hope and change. I mean, Sharpton's been selling hope and change for 30 years. Hey, <laughs> well, hey, anybody hey, be, so, be buying it? With a Lord tracksuit with a uh, conk and a, and a, and a perm. Right. With he, he presented it thing. in the wrong way. We know that. But, <laughs> but, but it was his message, though. <laughs> he had the same message. It's just that, you know, President Obama had that thing. That Americans could get behind. A uh, half-black, half-white American, somebody that's not full-blooded black, so to speak, and uh, looked good in the suit, was tall, left-handed, had a good smile, and had a good-looking family, man. So you, you wrap all that up with a good message and somebody who can deliver one heck of a speech, you may have your next president. You might have your next <laughs> president, man. You might have your next president. And like I said, I, Rubio's got that thing. I think he's got the thing, man. I'm not looking forward to Rubio. I'm still waiting on Ben Carson myself. <laughs> but <laughs> still waiting on Ben Carson. No, Dr. I, I ben can, Carson. I can get behind he's that. announcing in May. He's announcing in May. Yeah, yeah, I saw. He said he's coming out in May and letting us know what he's going to do, man. But that's what I'm excited about, man. I'm, I'm excited about Ben Carson. Now, I will admit, I don't think Ben Carson will ever get the nomination. But <laughs> <laughs> but, but but he will He will certainly have my support, though. Don't speak that on that, brother. Uh, <laughs> I'm just being honest, man. I'm being I'm honest. I'm excited about Ben Carson because I cannot wait to hear the outlandish things that he wants to say in his announcement. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that, but the, his problem is going to be there's a, there's going to be a point because this happens with every single black Republican candidate. So there's going to be, assuming he, you know, he makes the statement and he, he announces he's actually going to uh, put his name in the hat to run for president, there's going to be something, okay? I don't know what it is. The, from Ben Carson, as far as we know, his marriage has been great for 20 years or whatever it's been. But they're going to find a skeleton they may have to go back to his childhood years but they're going to find a skeleton and when they find that skeleton uh they're going to do their best to ride him until the wheels fall off on whatever his skeleton is the other thing that's going to have him that's going to uh, be his downfall is because he is not afraid to say what he believes to be the truth and say it in a way that is not politically correct that that is going to be the second thing that they they ride him on um assuming they don't get a good skeleton but they're going to take his words and they're going to beat him down with everything he says and and paint him as the um hateful candidate i'm sure is the way they're going to phrase it because he chooses to say things without being politically correct and in america today that is just not allowed. You have to be politically correct with everything you say. Otherwise, they will pound you to the ground. And that's going yeah, to that, well, be a problem for him. You're absolutely right. You have to be politically correct, but you cannot be an insane human being making those statements. But there's nothing insane about the great neurosurgeon in the entire world. <laughs> uh, the man is I the greatest you know, neurosurgeon in the world. Ben Carson has some of the most antiquated views on how black people should assimilate on gay marriage, on gay people in general, and how this country is going to be torn apart by some of those things. Listen, there, you being a Christian and not believing in uh, gay marriage or, or the lifestyle of gay individuals, those things are mutually exclusive. It's okay for you to say, yeah, I'm not necessarily okay with it, but it's not going to tear the country apart. <laughs> now, of course, that's an opinion that I hold, but we haven't seen the threads of this nation be torn apart by slavery so if slavery and civil rights and some of these other things have not torn this country to pieces, what makes us think that gay marriage is going to do that? The man is a, a, a whole, a, a, um, uh, what was I going to say? The man is a diehard Christian, Jason. So in the fabric of his soul, he believes that that's going to tear the nation apart. We may disagree with him, but hey, are we going to agree with everything? I mean, preach righteousness. Uh, well, are we supposed to, <laughs> we're not going to agree with everything the candidate says. You know what I'm saying? Some things you're going to let them have. And so that's just one of the things you're just gonna have to let him have, Jason. That's all. That's all. He, he's yeah, and the fact that you know black people are, are slaves to the entitlement system that Democrats created, but you know, whatever. But like you, I'm excited <laughs> about. Let, I'm let excited me ask you this. Let me ask you this though, Jason. Let's let's <laughs> let's talk about this for a second, just real quick. Okay, we we hate the word slave to the uh, entitlement system, but is there not? Some of us. Obviously, we're not the most people. We're not uh, the greatest race on entitlements. We know that. But aren't there a lot of us that tend to depend on things that come from the government? There are quite a few of us that do that. Can you at least agree on that? that 
that is correct, but that is not necessarily that is not necessarily beholden just to so called entitlement. A lot of things that come from the government um, we are dependent upon, like police, like fire engine, like Medicaid and Medicare. And I'm not saying that to necessarily take away from that statement. I'm just saying that we have to stop saying that we're slaves to certain things that are provided by the government. When we all depend on things that come from the government. Yeah, I have cousins who will file a tax return based off of welfare checks and things that they've gotten from the government, and I vehemently disagree with it. However, I do recognize that they are the minority. Same as with white people, man. There are more white people on food stamps than black people in America, and we're always talking about how Democrats are chaining black people to entitlements. That's just not true. I mean, by antiquated views on America, you know how America works, then <laughs> Now, that's a good question. <laughs> and I'm with the brother, but that is a good question. <laughs> He's going to have great advisors around him that will, yeah. that will educate him on the things that he may not but, understand. But is he going to listen? Somebody can educate you. That doesn't mean he's going to take the advice. <laughs> yeah, it's like, are you going to listen? And better yet, even if you don't listen, are you dumb enough to say it? <laughs> 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 that brother's gonna say what he wants. <laughs> he has demonstrated that. But I ain't mad at him. I mean, he, he's demonstrated. I think that. honesty is a quality that we are very much lacking in this country. So I do appreciate. Yeah, and, and I listen, do appreciate that. If, if that's how he, if that's truly what he believes, then yeah, I can respect his honesty because, like you said, we're too PC that when someone goes out, steps outside of that box, then we automatically condemn them. If that's how he truly feels, then that, that's great. That goes back to the conversation we were having about uh, servicing, you know, people who, who choose to have a gay lifestyle or not or whatever it may be, that you give me the information and then I am entitled to do what I please with it. So if you tell me something that does not shake with my own personal political doctrine, then I have the ability to go and vote for somebody else. So, yeah, if, if that's how he feels, then more power to him, man. Keep spewing what you believe, and that gives us an opportunity to either vote for you or go to somebody else. Right. Well, hopefully we're going to choose to vote for him, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> hey, even I get behind him, so some, something got to be right. <laughs> something got to be right. I don't know. I'm just saying. He's the black candidate. We know the general. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's what it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's you know, you, what would be interesting, though, if he was a black candidate with these views that he was Democrat? I think that would make some black people's head explode. <laughs> it would. It would make some black people's head explode. But you know what? They vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> he got my vote. Yeah, I would say he got mine too. He got my vote. They would vote for him. You though, ain't even got to send no ballot to the house. They Just would vote for him. Hey, man, Jason, man. We, we come gotta, on, man. We wind it down, man. We got to get out of here. I appreciate you for calling, man. Uh, anytime, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, right, man. Thanks, thanks Jay. All right. All right, peace. All right, real quick. Um, did you see the story? Did you see the viral story that's going around about the redneck? Who, yes, I did see that. Did you see that? Did you Quite see that, Mr. King? You didn't say nothing but the redneck. There was a viral story going around about a redneck who is basically advocating um, against um, white people or white supremacy or, or uh, what, what did you call it? Well, basically, no, the gist of it was he was trying to he wanted white people to admit that they even if they are not white racist. Privilege. Yeah. Even if they were not racist to we, they have to, in order to change this country or change the system, you have to sit down and admit that you have benefit. There is white privilege one and you have benefited from it. Right. Because he said the, the, the system is a white supremacist system. Right. Right. And so to acknowledge that and then hopefully begin to do something different. Right. And he was like, once you, uh, he said, once you can, once you acknowledge it and you can admit that you benefited from it, now we can move forward and try to change it. So it's, it's not a, I guess, to help it from being a mutually exclusive system, I guess would be the word. Right. I, I just thought it was interesting that, that he made the post one. Yeah. Uh, I, after I read his article, though, I also see he was jocking because he is a writer himself. Right. <laughs> and he's an actor. Uh, he's an actor. He's a writer. He's hoping to do some directing And he's as well. trying to make a name for himself so, to some extent. Yeah. So, so this is actually a platform that's going to hopefully get his name out there. But, right. But, hey, I, I at least appreciate so if he's the, a, the acknowledgement right. that he did. If so. he's honest, I'm more power to him. Right. And even if he's not, I respect the hustle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we want to thank you for listening to us. Uh, this has been Real Family Talk. This is your host, Jay Real. Uh, remember, we're here every Wednesday, 9 p.m. from 9 to 10 p.m. We will be back next week. This is WOKB, your urban and inspiration station, uh, w, uh, 1680 a.m. Uh, Mr. King is telling me we got a few more minutes, I guess. <laughs> a few more seconds. Right? A few more seconds, I suppose. 
Uh, but uh, hey, listen, I've been doing a new series called The Daily 15. Uh, we've been posting it on the Real Family Talk uh, Facebook page. It's also been posting on the Real Family Talk Twitter page as well. Please check on it out. On the YouTube out. page as well. <laughs> See you next week. Thank you for listening to Real Family Talk. This is one of your co-hosts, Jeremy, a.k.a. Younger Brother. Tune in next week, 9 to 10 p.m. And every Wednesday from 9 to 10 p.m. on WOKB 1680, your urban empowerment and inspiration station. See you. My brother, my brother.